Hey guys, Marco here from Aviero Live CS. Welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to talk about weather radar. It seems like weather radar is not working on the PMDG, so we cannot use that today. Well, we use our normal presentations here. There are so many things to talk about weather radar, guys. I'm not going to mention all of them. I'm just trying to summarize the most important things. So I will uh, give you like an introduction of how it works, the controls and indicators we have, and then we will see some examples of how weather looks through the weather radar. All right, so let's get started. So the basic foundational technology uses two radar scans at two different tilt angles to capture all the ground and weather information in front of the aircraft. This information is stored in a temporary memory buffer. Using the beam-to-beam -beam power comparison technology, the radar draws a line 6,000 feet beneath the aircraft at cruise altitudes. Non-threat weather that is below the line approximately 6,000 feet beneath the aircraft, is not shown. Thread weather above the line is displayed on the navigation display. A beam-to-beam -beam comparison is then used to separate the ground clutter from the weather returns. This enables the radar to see all the weather from the nose of the aircraft out to 320 nautical miles. So now let's talk about the controls we have for the weather radar. And it could be different in your airplane, but most of them, they look like this. So uh, the captain controls are the ones at the top here. And the first officer controls are the ones at the bottom. And we have some common controls right in the middle. We'll start with the auto man uh, button. It's a two position switch. Auto is selected when the button is in. Manual is selected when the button is out. In the auto position, the radar controls tilt and gain and analyzes thunderstorm threats to present the actual cell threat. So when auto is selected, the radar initially displays both weather and ground returns. Three to four sweeps, 12 to 16 seconds, are required to remove ground clutter and initialize the automatic functions. If manual is selected, the radar will remember the auto settings for two minutes before needing to reinitialization. When the radar is in auto and weather is selected, the automatic weather detection features are activated. Now, if we have auto and weather plus turbulence, which is this one here, we have the automatic weather features active plus Doppler turbulence detection. If your aircraft has the left and right receiver transmitter installed, it should be here. When the center button is out, the left RT is active as indicated by the hat symbol on the button. As you can see the hat symbol here. The right RT is active when the button is in. Test, which is this one here. System test is activated by pressing the test button on the radar control panel. Alternatively, the test procedure can be initiated through the central maintenance computer. Now we have the transfer button. Allows the captain or first officer to select the other pilot's control settings. For example, if the first officer presses the transfer button, the captain's radar control settings will be displayed on the first officer's navigation display. And exactly the same will happen if the captain presses the transfer button. This function works for both auto and manual modes of operation. During manual operation, the transfer includes a slaving of the tilt value selected on the opposite side. Range settings are not transferred. Weather plus turbulence enables display of weather targets with turbulence information overlaid on the display. Turbulence will be displayed as a magenta color out to 40 nautical miles for all selected ranges. Weather, when the radar is in the auto position and the weather mode is selected, we will have the automatic weather detection features. When auto is selected, we will see the letter A displayed next to the tilt code. 
auto and weather plus turbulence are recommended in all phases of flight. If we have selected manual, the letter M is displayed next to the TIL code. When we select manual mode, the radar operates like a traditional manual radar. Tilt and gain must be manually controlled. With the exception of wind shear, all automatic features are disabled. When we select map, the mode enables identification of terrain features such as mountains, coastlines, bodies of water, etc. Ground clutter is a spring-loaded momentary function that shows all returns, ground clutter and weather. Once released, ground clutter will be removed from the display on the next sweep. Note the ground clutter button is inactive during manual operation. Here we have the tilt and we have the gain. So the tilt is the outer knob, gain is the inner knob. The tilt control is inactive during auto operation. Calibrated gain is selected when the triangle is in the 12 o'clock position, like here. Maximum gain is achieved when the gain knob is rotated to the fully clockwise position. Minimum gain occurs when the knob is rotated to the fully counterclockwise position, as you can see here. Minimum gain is fully counterclockwise, maximum gain fully clockwise. So we have the standard radar colors and they basically represent the rain fall rates. And you can see in this picture, the standard radar reflectivity rainfall rates. So for example, the green color at high altitudes, it could represent ice crystallizing. We have the amber color, we have red, we have the speckled red dots, which indicates hail, lighting or turbulence. And we have the magenta, which is heavy turbulence. So the recommended operating mode is auto calibrated gain weather plus turbulence in all phases of flight. Now let's review the forward looking wind shear. It's activated for altitudes below 2,300 feet above ground level for both takeoff and landing phases of flight. Upon activation, the weather scan region decreases to 120 degrees to enable faster weather and wind shear updates. Alerts are displayed in the cockpit below 1200 feet out to 3 nautical miles. So here we can see some of the oral alerts we have on the AFIS indication. For the caution, we will hear a monitor radar display. Forewarning on the approach, go around, wind shear ahead. Warning, take off, wind shear ahead, wind shear ahead. Even if the radar is turned off, Wind shear is automatically activated when the thrust lever is advanced towards the takeoff position. Oral alerts and copy annunciators are operational. If the radar is on, but in map or test mode, and the system detects a wind shear, the system display will automatically change to the weather plus turbulence mode to display weather and wind shear icons. The selected range does not change automatically. And here you can see the wind shear detection coverage during approach and go around, and this is during takeoff. Now we will see a little bit about radar interpretation, and this one is for low altitude. I put some pictures here so you can have an idea of how it looks. At lower altitude, solid green returns normally indicate stratiform rain and at most represent light to moderate chop. In the case of monsoon rains, it is not unusual for the entire display to turn red. Should flight crews encounter a red out situation, gain can be temporarily reduced by four clicks or about one color level. Two, better determine if embedded cells are hidden by the stratiform rain. So if we see this picture here, Reducing the gain by about one color level, counterclockwise four clicks, will enable the crew to determine if a strong embedded cells are in the yellow-red region. In this case, embedded cells are not present. 
Now, when we see the high altitude operations, during high altitude operations, interpretations of the picture below changes. In this case, a broad area of green may indicate engine ice crystal icing conditions. These ice crystal clouds are normally caused by significant amber or red cells beneath the aircraft altitude. Ice crystals icing has resulted in TAT anomalies and engine power loss. And again, we have a checklist for that. For any ice and rain, you can see ice crystallizing. On the right side here, we can see some of the radar interpretation and the normal thunderstorms are circular or oval in shape with shallow gradients like this. A distorted cell shape indicative of internal shear conditions and steep gradients are associated with hazardous weather. And here I have put some weather that is non-navigable and we'll see why. In the first example, you see bad weather. The area between the two fingers that extend to the top right of the cell is indicative of a potential hail shaft. Although the bottom finger paints green, it should not be transited. In the second example here, you can see the two fingers, and again, they indicate a possible hail shaft. In addition, you can see the hook at the end of the bottom finger, and this is sometimes associated with tornadoes. So it is recommended to avoid this type of cells by 15 to 25 miles. It all depends on your company's SOPs. Now we see the next example, uh, the steep gradients of these cells indicate severe turbulence. The huge shapes associated with each cell are potential hail shafts. For the last example, we can see scalloped edges indicate significant turbulence that may extend outside the cell boundaries. And we could expect moderate to severe turbulence flying in black along the right hand edge of the cell. Okay guys, that's the end of the video for today. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you are not subscribed to the channel yet, please do it now and don't forget to hit that bell so you will be notified once we upload a new video. If you think these videos could be useful for somebody else, please share them. And that's going to help me a lot to grow the channel. Next week, we will start talking about non-normal checklists and abnormal situations for the flight instruments and displays. Until then, guys, please take care and hope to see you soon.